you guys welcome to our very first edition of she did that saturday so we are going to talk about some awesome makeup products we're going to be i'm going to be telling you guys some true crime stories that happened from anywhere from the victorian era to more present day and today we are actually going to be talking about the lead countess herself and that is elizabeth vittore so elizabeth was a little different her family was a little different they uh had a lot of wealth they had a lot of, of power in the community that they lived in um and they just they basically ran things the way they wanted to so before we get into elizabeth and all her craziness we are going to go ahead and talk about first the sponsored line that I have for today and that is the ever so amazing Metaluso. Metaluso literally means love and luxury and that's exactly what you're gonna get. You are gonna feel lovely and you are gonna feel luxurious. One thing I love about Metaluso is not only do they care about your outside, they deeply care about your inside. Your mental well-being is huge to them. So this company is amazing. You're going to get clean, vegan beauty. It is all natural, but you're still going to feel glamorous. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive into what we're talking about today. And the reason why this company actually matches with the stories that I tell. The reason why I pick the true crime stories that I do is not only because they were all beautiful women, they were all very considered prominent women, women of their time, but they all in some way, shape or form had some kind of mental health issue, I believe. Now that's more my opinion it doesn't say that anywhere but i'm sorry if you try to kill your family or you know you poison 600 men plus there's something going on upstairs you know something going on so again that's why i love the metalusa line it ties into the whole mental health aspect of things which i don't think we think about when we think about true crimes we just think about crazy ladies doing crazy stuff or crazy men doing crazy stuff but we don't look at it as they needed help like someone gonna help them so that's what brings us to like i said um she did that saturday so let's begin let's talk about elizabeth and all her reign of terror so elizabeth how do we how do we first describe her the blood countess herself well, Elizabeth Vittori was born on August 7th of 1560. Now, as a daughter of Georgie, Georgie and Anna Vittori, because the Vittoris often were married within their own families, like I had explained, which, you know, that's where that craziness kind of comes in a little bit. Um, they, they develop some issues sometimes, you know? I mean, you can't really blame them. So, you know, Georgie and Anna Vittori were, were related in some way. So, again, they married within their own family. <laughs> but they would suffer from um, a lot of mental illnesses like we talked about and the other genetic disorders you know for example the king Stefan Batore um he was he had attacks of epilepsy so he was a you know he had he had problems with that his two brothers were well known on um, tyrants and, and criminals and his father used to take a sleigh in the middle of the summer and he would with Elizabeth and um he just he would he would basically just torture people like it was insane like it was completely you know and he would just go on these like crazy adventures and it's like it's it's the summer what is what is he doing 
Where's he going? Who's he talking to? <laughs> like, where do you go in the summer with a sleigh? I, I don't I don't know. So it kind of just showed something wasn't right with dad. Okay, something was not quite right there. So um, that goes on to Elizabeth. And Elizabeth had a slender body. She was gorgeous. Um, you know, she had the nice complected skin. She had beautiful long black hair. Uh, from an early age, she distinguished herself by not only her um, extraordinary beauty, but with her, you know, enormous intelligence. She spoke Hungarian, um, Slavic, she had Greek, Latin, and German, and like all kinds of languages. You know, and at the age of four or five, she suffered um, from epile ep epileptic seizures as well. Violent mood swings, as well as painful migraines. Um, at the time when, you know, the, the beating of servants was obvious, you know, according to a Hungarian law, peasants were, were the property of, of, of the noblemen. You know, they were their, they were their property. You know, the young countess saw a lot of violence in her life. So for Elizabeth, um, it wasn't really that odd. It wasn't weird for her to see violence, to see this crazy, you know, kind of um, things that were going on. It was like just what the family did in a weird way. So to her, this violence, this kind of crazy behavior, you know, it, it wasn't that odd to her, sadly. You know, there was a lot of things like that going on. So, well, the, um, she went on and she was allowed to observe, um, a public execution of a local gypsy, you know, accused of kidnapping and selling a few children in slavery. So who was, um, sewn to a, a horse's stomach? I mean, what? <laughs> like, what are we talking about here? sewn to a horse's stomach that's insane <laughs> like like i said a lot of mental health issues going on here so just to recap what i put on here this is going to be the master blender the primer and skincare natural glow um primer uh i absolutely love this stuff it's amazing it feels great so um that's where we we start there of course. So back to um, Elizabeth. So when she was 15 years old, um, her cousin, the above, you know, the Stefan Batori was her cousin, in a fit of anger ordered to cut ears and noses of local peasants that fueled um, a rebellion against him. So not only is this guy like already a little, a little, you know, a little, a little crazy because of his family history. But now he's ordering people to go around and cut off, you know, noses and ears from people because they, they, you know, were suspected of starting a rebellion, you know, and, and, oh, I mean, I guess, you know, you probably shouldn't be starting rebellions, but at the same time, Ugh, you know, to cut off someone's nose and their ears is, I would only imagine, be pretty horrific. I would, yeesh. That was obviously a very, very tough time in history, so. But, you know, they went on. And again, this made it to where, to Elizabeth, these things weren't weird. They were not. Well, ugh, wasn't even a problem. So, and this was out of, out of anger. You know, uncle was mad. So, cousin was mad. So, you know, he kind of flipped out. So, um, in 1570, uh, the 10-year-old Elizabeth Batori had basically was handed with promises to, was promised to marry a very, uh, a five-year older than her, um, Frederic uh, Nadasse. So Frederic was the, um, the official engagement took place uh, three years after she met him. So um, according to uh, the custom, the young fiance was sent to the court 
you know, of her future mother-in-law to learn how to manage a household. So, um, basically they got, <laughs> you know, you're, you're going to your mother-in-law's house and, uh, probably don't know her that well, I'm assuming anyway. And this girl's got to teach you how to run a household. And because of who you are, basically, I'm assuming you better do it right, you know? So if you get any part of that wrong, it's probably not going to be good for you. I mean, your cousin's, you know, cutting up ears and, and, and noses and stuff. So, I mean, you probably want to make sure that you're, you're doing your part. You better do your part. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's odd, but it was their, it was their custom at the time, I guess. So, you know, she had to go off and, and go with the mother-in-law and yeah, learn, learn how to manage a household. Um, and, and basically learn how to be a housewife. I'm kind of thinking that that was not exactly in Elizabeth's plan. Just saying, but we'll find out, I guess. Um, so in 1574, she gave birth to an, illeg an illegitimate daughter whose father was actually a local peasant. Um, his name was Laszlo. So he was allegedly charged with, with rape and it was said that um, Frederic, he ordered to castrate the man. So it wasn't, hey, you know, you did this and, and, and it's not okay, you're going to prison. No. So it was, you're getting castrated and you're never going to be able to have kids again. Period. And that's just, again, how it was back then. There was no... There wasn't really room for second chances, nor were second chances ever really given. So you either, again, you did it right the first time, or you just pray that um, someone's feeling nice that day. But seeing as she was uh, of higher stature, they basically looked at him as someone so beneath her that they, you know, they couldn't, they couldn't risk it. They couldn't risk it, so they castrated the poor man. Um... You know, again, that's just kind of the time. I mean, that's what they did. Hands to yourself, or we're going to make sure they stay to yourself. So the child um, was born in, in, secret, in secrecy. So, and handed over to a trusted woman who, you know, who was given a huge fee. And um, they were sent away and told not to return to Transylvania during, you know, Elizabeth's life. So basically said, you're never going to meet your mom. You're not going to see her, you know, because of whoever your dad was. Sorry, not happening. Which, think about that for a minute. Like, you know, you, you get older, you obviously find out, I'm sure at some point in time, most, most people do, that who you think you're with is not your parent. But not only that, but your parent had to send you away because of her, her stature in life. And, you know, your, your dad was considered a peasant. Your, 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 I mean, is it stepped on, on, I guess, castrated him. It's, it's a mess. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? Literally. So again, the mental health aspect of these things are completely crazy. So, as time kind of went on, um, on May 8th of 1575, um, there was a glamorous wedding ceremony that took place, and it was in a castle, and the wedding, um, celebrations lasted three days. You know, uh, three days. That's crazy. Uh, so, I couldn't, look, I couldn't imagine planning anything like that. That'd be too much for me. But anyway, so the wedding, um, the Nadasse family gave, um, he gave his, Elizabeth, a gothic castle. That was her present. So, you know, and it was the, um, no, I, I'm sorry if I slaughter this name, but the, um, Czech Tease Castle. So, and it was located in the rocky backwoods of Upper Hungary. So, uh, you know, thanks to the marriage, two most powerful Hungarian families were now joint. So, um, the uh, 
Nadasi day the Nanat <laughs> <laughs> the Nanasides and the, you know, the Batories. So they, um, you know, they were joined now. They were both huge. So that was a good thing for them. Um, however, you know, um, there was also the, there were, there was the known aspect of the mental illness that was going on. You know, they were considered, um, respectable, conservatives uh you know and they were a very poised family but after the wedding the newlyweds lived um in hungary in the castle so um the castle of um sarvar so the family the family estate of the of the nadastes the no nah, i cannot say that so <laughs> frederick anyway his family he um spent most of most of his time at war so um three years after the wedding he set out and um to fight basically um the turks the turkish uh in the turkish war so at that time elizabeth was traveling between numerous you know castles uh, overseas her estates and and with you know her servants and She's just traveling. She's kind of doing her thing, um, you know, which is also a little, little different than most people would experience in their life. But you know, when uh, 19, 19, or fifteen ninety one came around, the so called Long War began, and um, Frederick was uh, labeled the Black Bay um, or the Black Knight. So that's interesting. Um, he was actually labeled, yeah, the Black Knight, which is a little. Uh, little eerie oh you know she's the blood countess and he's the black knight Eesh. so as that's going on um in his free time he used to throw up a pair of turkish prisoners and catch them um on the tips of his swords it's not hacky sack or anything but i mean what? That was his, his downtime? I mean, that's insane. So it's a little, little crazy there. Just you know, toss them up, catch them. I don't know. So he, um, he was cruel, you know, when he returned home. So he's going through all this stuff from being at war, right? So he's deemed the Black Knight. He's, he's, you know, that's got to mess with him. He already has mental issues that are known. So, I mean, when you put war into that, I mean, it's, come on, you know, you're just asking for a whole mess, you know. So, and um, I want to go ahead and pause right there for one second and just let you guys know about the full coverage concealer cream from, um, it's called Mix from uh, Metaluso. This can be used not only as a foundation, um, eyelid primer, and a concealer so it's a good three in one and it does just that it does beautifully for all three um i kind of use it as uh well i guess all three so just in one shot so that's what i did to my lower eye and my upper eyelid here so now back to to um frederick so he returned home and um he was not he was not the same he was he was he was not okay i'm like dude was not okay not even a little bit so things are going on obviously he's he's become very cruel he's different Some, something's up something's up so he um it was it was told that he was once ordered to smear a young girl with honey so that she was consist consistently bitten by insects <sighs> Apparently, it was Frederick to taunt his wife, a trick called, they called it, um, kicking the stars, which, um, can, you know, they, they played these little games. It was weird. It's not normal husband and wife games. I'll tell you that. It's a little off there. So, um, they called, you know, they played these games. So anyways, they, they called, one was called kicking the stars, which consisted of putting a piece of, um, oil soaked paper between the fingers of um in of a disobedient servant if you will and um basically and, and they they sent it uh, on they set him on fire 
I mean, there's no easy way of saying that. They set him on fire. Um, it, it was insane. So that's kind of where you see this, like, now it's like, not just him going crazy. She's not only, you know, the only one kind of already doing crazy stuff. <laughs> but now it's become a whole family adventure. It's it's family now fun time, you know, at the uh, at the Frederick's house, I guess, at the castle. So it's it's family fun time, I guess. Um, so the disobedient servant, you know, had had paper oil soaked put between his fingers. And they set it on fire, you know, and they called it kicking the stars. Like that's, ugh, couldn't even imagine. Couldn't even imagine how painful that would be. But, you know, he also presented Elizabeth with a pair of gloves ended in claws. Claws, like, oh, here, honey. You know, they're not, they're not of gloves, but, you know, you can claw someone's eyeballs out with these things. I'll tell you that, no one's cooking. We're, we're clawing. Like, what? I, 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 I don't know. I don't even know where to begin with that. It's, it's, it's insane. It's not exactly the present that I think that most, uh, you know, most women hope for, you know, maybe as an anniversary gift. I don't know. Like, here you go. <laughs> like, go ahead. Have fun. You won't have to do your nails ever. So, um, she used it though to punish her servants. So again, that's where this like family punishing started. And then when Frederick was, um, on his military, you know, expeditions, um, Victoria, Elizabeth had numerous, uh, romances. So she was traveling and visiting relatives, you know, um, just basically, uh, you know, relatives that lived in, in Vienna and were said, um, she was said to basically introduce the nice, um, she was trying to, I don't know, she was just trying to explore the world, I guess. And in, in doing that, you know, she kind of came across a lot of crazy things, you know, that she maybe didn't really know about too much until she started venturing outside of where they lived at the castle. Obviously, it was an interest of hers in a really weird way, but... You know, again, they already have some crazy issues going on, so just saying, you know, it was a matter of time before she starts diving into her own stuff, you know, the husband's away, so Elizabeth was gonna apply. <laughs> it was crazy. So I'm just gonna do some contouring here as I go along. So I, I only imagine you know I can only imagine how you go from having a baby by by you know what's considered a peasant your baby's taken whether or not she cared obviously no one really knows but you know then you go from that to getting <laughs> getting claw gloves <laughs> from your husband who is deemed a black knight gone crazy you know now you're off seeing aunts and uncles where you are you you know aunt clara actually is who she was seeing um and now she's you know she's uh introducing young elizabeth um to a whole world a whole world of uh of some uh different things we'll say so not only did they endure in lesbianism and, you know, multiple romantic partners, um, and Clara seemed like a great example, huh? And she seemed awesome, <laughs> you know, shoot. <laughs> but and Clara's uh, loyal servant, um, uh, his name was Thorkel, uh, introduced the Countess into the world of dark powers. So... <laughs> Again, if it wasn't enough with the other stuff going on, now we're going to bring some dark powers into this as if they weren't already in a weird way present. I don't know. But um, in the absence of her husband, Vict uh, the young countess was, she was invited to um, 
she was basically self-proclaimed sorcerers and seers and witches and you know all them types um would would visit her <laughs> when she began to show up with with a man of um a pale complexion and um unnaturally sharp teeth um who dressed in black the local villagers who believed in vampires i mean this was a thing for them you know um the, the vampires were real you know this is trans you know like what's now considered transylvania so i mean to them you know it's it's vampires are real so they're not a, you know they're not a, a fictitious folklore or anything they believed that they were a real thing so she's showing up now with people and they're you know displaying what she what they called you know vampire like uh features so of course you know they're getting a little 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 maybe even a little worried i don't know but they started calling her the um the beast of um sajate um so in in please correct me if i'm not saying these right i'm not um obviously i'm, I'm not proficient in the language so um they're a little different but yeah she was considered a you know beast like you know she was she was not um the normal girl that you'd you know meet down the street i'm sure in that time so over time elizabeth um she became a mistress in preparing um medicines you know stocks and potions and one of her letters to her husband she actually described um an extremely effective way of uh, casting spells um you know catch a black hen um and beat it to death with a a white cane um keep the blood and smear a little of it on on your enemy yeah <laughs> and then if you get no chance to smear it on his body obtain one of his garments and smear it on that you know you don't got one you do another so she was obviously getting really really deep into this 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 dark power this dark magic by this time and again her husband's not always there i mean you know most women would probably join a book club <laughs> but she decided to uh meet with sorcerers so yeah you know i i guess teach their own so, um, as that kind of, you know, happened, <laughs> the Countess began to torture her victims, um, at the, um, Sar Sarver uh, Castle. So that was around, like, 1585. Um, screams of the tortured were supposed to, re like, relieve her nagging migraines. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> you're uh you're having migraines so so torturous screams are what's gonna do it that's gonna be your 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 savior there you know just uh just let those um servants scream it out and uh it'll definitely make you i mean i would think actually it'd probably make you forget about a migraine but i'm pretty sure for me it'd give me more of one yeah so then she quickly understood um that peasant maids working in the castle were an easy target they were there you know they were already having to do everything you told them they were there so they were around they were easy they were easy to to snatch up and do whatever you wanted to them so the smallest mistake of the servants were an excuse for her to basically allow punishment so you can't get away with that i mean come on she liked to torment people by um, stabbing them underneath their nails or cutting their fingers off. Oh, God. Yeesh. So, you know, naked girls were also, um, they were poured with water and left in the cold. Yeah, I, I bet they wish they would have had, you know, cousins slay at that, at that point in time. Just saying. It's a little, a little crazy there, you know? I mean... That's probably one of the worst forms of torture, and we wouldn't even think about that. You're being, you know, water being poured on you. It's probably freezing out. I'm pretty sure, otherwise, she probably wouldn't have done it. 
and uh, you're being left like in the freezing cold, probably snow, all that. And uh, yeah, and you're just like, well, oh well, you shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have spilt the milk on the table. It's what you get. Sorry, just what it is. Because like it says, they were looking for any excuse. She was looking for anything, anything anybody did. Look at her sideways. <laughs> Trust me, it's probably not a girl you want to look at sideways. Just saying, she's got them claw gloves. So, if that wasn't enough, you know, to kind of th get things going, sometimes the um, natural methods were used. Um, the servants were beaten, and then um, they were basically, uh, they were just beaten and beaten, and, and they, had, they were tortured, you know, over a period of time. And um, Elizabeth's tortures became more and more brutal. So as the times, you know, were going on and on, Elizabeth was becoming more into this. She obviously was exploring different ways to do it. She was into it. It's a thing now, you know, and again, let me revert back to, um, we're probably dealing with a lot of mental illness here, a lot of things going on that would not normally go on, and uh, a lot of um, unfortunate people that were just kind of in the wake of all this. So, you know, it's it's unfortunate, but at the same time, it was the times, you know. They probably thought she was possessed, something crazy. They called her a beast. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's what it was. So, um, you know, the servants were torn out with uh, reddish pillars. So they were, they were just like torn apart. Uh, she would just tear them apart. So, and sometimes the victim's skins were scorched with, you know, hot irons and, um, or it's, it, their mouth was, uh, dr you know, drug for, um, by the corners, you know, for a long time, you know, tearing their mouth completely out. It, it was crazy. So, you know, in 19 or in 1601, Anna Darvula, Darval, Darval, um, a witch, uh, described by the locals. So now, now we're, uh, we're getting into the witches and, um, I'm thinking this is probably not good. So she's already kind of doing her own stuff. She already, you know, dabbled in the, in the black powers and now, um, she's, she's meeting full fledged witches. Oh yeah. So tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put on some of this Mill Collection, the Micromat um, by Metaluso. It's a nice finishing powder or a foundation. Again, it is completely um, vegan and clean beauty. I always just go over all my lighter areas to make sure they blend in so it doesn't look like I have, you know, white evil eyes going on. Some of the darker spots from contouring, it just blends them all together really well. So... That being said, so the locals, um, this was a witch. So Anna um, Darvule, Darvule was, she was a witch, you know, she was described by the locals as a wild beast in a female body. Like they literally already knew she was crazy. <laughs> like she was not too nice of a person. So she became the, um, the countess's you know, accomplice in all this and, and in her crimes, you know, in her tortures, she, she kind of like welcomed her in. We're besties now. We're besties. So ever since she started to, uh, live in the castle, um, the personality of Elizabeth began to change. Um, mistress, uh, became, you know, she became crueler. So it wasn't, you know, ever since Anna moved in, so Anna moves in and here we go. Like, things are getting real. Now, she's a witch, remember? So, you know, there wasn't much hope probably for a, um, a great, uh, you know, great outcome anyway. So, she was becoming crueler. Um, you know, her subjects uh, later recalled that it just became worse and worse. So, it was um, Anna who taught the Countess how to kill. Now, remember, she tortured up until this point. She was, you know, clawing people's faces, you know, tearing out mouths. She was doing all that. But she didn't actually kill anybody yet. She just tortured them, you know, to a point where they probably wanted to die, sure. But 
she didn't actually get to that point yet. So when Anna came in, it kind of, <laughs> kind of brings everything to a head with that. So um, it, it gets a little interesting. And then, uh, so just to kind of pause right there real quick, I'm going to be using the multi-way, um, the three-way eye, lip, and face um, by Metaluso. This can be, it's a nice little shimmer. You can use it as a highlight as I'm doing here, or you can use it on your lips for a little bit of color, or even on your eyes for a little bit of shadow. And um, it's amazing stuff. I'm gonna take the Metaluso. Um, this is the SX Precision. And I'm just going to go ahead and blend that in with everything else I got going on. Actually, because I already swiped, I'm gonna do this. So um, great, great for, like I said, a highlighter or even to give yourself a little, little color. So, back to uh, the house guest, you know, the bestie. She, um, she learned, you know, is teaching Elizabeth now how to kill. So as if anything else wasn't bad enough, now we got a, you know, a potential, you know, a, a killer in training, if you will. So, um, Elizabeth, uh, you know, reported the, um, the uh the cool the cholera um epidemic as an explanation for her death of her first victims so she's not only like doing this but she she didn't even take credit for it at first she actually you know just said oh they just caught the the, the virus you know they they got the virus so they're they're not okay like they're they died <laughs> but in all reality her and miss anna you know my best friend she, uh, they were, they were now killing these people. So the official funerals, um, with pastors and, and, you know, chants took place. Um, they, you know, the local, the local, um, the clerics, however, they, they basically became suspicious. Like, why is there so many funerals going on? Like, what's going on here? Why, why is everyone around you like dying? They all got the, the plague? I don't think so. Mm -mm, not happening. So, Obviously, you know, they, uh, she wasn't taking credit for these, for these quite yet. And, um, but Anna was, you know, she was guiding her. She's showing the way as a true best friend would. I mean, you know, come on. She's, she's showing her the way. And, but the locals are getting suspicious. So, um, they, you know, so it was a little, a little different there. So when more and more, um, you know, people were dying, they were asked to perform the funerals, um, the funeral rites for servants who died, either by this, this, you know, this plague or for unknown reasons, you know, the mysterious unknown reasons. Um, that's when they got a little bit, a little bit suspicious, you know, things, the you know, flags were up, flags were up at this point. So in 1602, um, the, the, the priest and scholar, um, publicly basically demanded um the the to have the bodies exhumed you know they they were they were now really really suspicious of what was going on um you know it, it was now not just about you know the people that were dying they they know something's up so they're they're not okay with this anymore they're not you know they're, they're asking questions, you know, they're, they're totally asking questions at this point. And even the priest is like, nope, we need to exhume bodies. We need to, you know, um, we need to definitely see what's going on here because something is not right. Something's wrong with these people. And it's not just, you know, that they're family capped. Something else is, is, is up. So they started asking more questions. Um, so they, uh, you know, so as that's kind of going on and we don't know where, you know, the husband's at, he's still, still gone. So, uh, they, they, he also asked Count, or yeah, at this time now, Count, um, Frederick, um, together with another priest from the area of, um, Savar to stop his wife's cruelty. So not only is he of the innocent, but not only is this priest wanting to exhume bodies, but now he's going, you know, this needs to stop. 
Frederick, this is not okay. Not cool, man. Like, it needs to stop. So they're, you know, publicly asking him now to stop. Stop it. Tell her to calm down. Like, tell your wife to chill. And, you know, it's, it's obviously, I can see that actually getting her more fired up. But, unfortunately, um, Frederick, Frederick died um, on January 4th you know, 1604. It was um, officially stated that he died of um, combat injuries sustained several days earlier. So he, you know, from, from obviously from war. Um, the locals, though, they didn't think that was the case. They thought Miss Elizabeth had, um, you know, something to do with it. So she, uh, she was speculated, it was speculated that Elizabeth herself or someone, you know, close to her contributed to his death in some sort of way. So, um, that was, that was obviously not probably the best for them to, uh, to dive into at that time, seeing as, you know, it seems like she's just getting more and more mad. I can like picture almost like a lady in, you know, a padded room, just like pulling her hair out and getting mad as can be like smoke coming out of her ears. So, Shortly after her husband's um, death, um, Elizabeth moved to the that the castle that she was gifted, um, the uh, the Chaktis castle, where she in she initially lived in a stronghold located near the church. Then um, the numerous victims of the um, of the Blood Princess, we'll say began to grow so you know what is she gonna do the so the countess was was basically um was furious she was mad she was not happy about this she was not okay especially when she was going um on a journey or waiting for a public appearance you know her lust for blood was was it was still growing you know she wanted it it was it was not okay so soon she began to um attack her victims with teeth and, and biting off pieces of their bodies from, um, you know, necks and arms or, or wherever she could bite them, I guess. She um, started to use razors and, and torches or torches and, um, you know, tongs, whatever she could use. She was also, you know, um, used to stitch um, steam tr s the seamstress's mouth shut. Now, if that, you know, like a dress, um, which isn't, you know, just odd enough. Like, that's a huge irony. Like, you're a seamstress and, you know, you get your your mouth stitched shut. Ugh, that's horrible. But, you know, she was, uh, she was now in this, in this vampire-like mode. So, she started to use, like I said, razors and all kinds of things. So, um, it, if she didn't like a new dress, that's what her seamstress got her mouth sewn shut. So, huh, I mean, yeah, it's crazy, crazy. So the most trusted servants um, of the lady of the house were, um, was uh, uh, Fico, which was um, kind of known as a funny little man. Uh, he was something that was a little bit, you know, he was known as um, almost like an ugly little dwarf. And, that's what they said. Um, and also, obviously, Bestie Anna. Can't forget her. And um, the nurse of the Countess's children. Because she did have children throughout this time. Which was Jo. So, um, and they they actually called her, uh, they called uh, one of the, and they also had some witches that stayed with them. So, they called the witch um, Dorka, I believe it is. And, um... It, she had like a little little family there, a little odd family. So, as well as um, there was also, I guess, a old witch and, and like a prisoner too that that she kind of housed. So Elizabeth began to see um, with you know Anna that Anna was becoming blind. She was actually losing her vision. So um, the blinders um had their specialties, uh, Dorka was actually, um, like to cut fingers off with, with scissors. So Anna preferred to give, um, 500, uh, strokes with a whip 
they all had their things. They had these weird things that they liked. So Elizabeth liked um everything. She was kind of into all of it. She's like, yeah, I like it all. It's cool, I guess. So um, I guess Joe uh, later testified that um, anywhere she went, she looked immediately for a place where they could torture, you know, young girls. Um, you know, a local resident heard from from the servant from the servants that their mistress could neither eat nor drink if she had not previously seen one of um, the virgins from amongst her her maids killed in a bloody way. So she would starve herself, go you know thirsty everything if she didn't see these acts happening. Like that's how much it became a part of her. Like I said, the mental illness is beyond at this point. So she uh she definitely was was quite in it. Um she now is saying I'm not gonna eat, I'm not gonna drink unless I, I see this happening, unless I see these <laughs> these acts being performed, which, you know, in itself is nuts, but to not eat or drink because of it. Okay, sis. So um the countess <sighs> So the Count's death reminded Elizabeth that she would not live forever. She wasn't going to live forever. She was a single widow now at the age of 40. Um, ready to do anything to stop the, you know, the destructive time. Every piece of her body was um, rubbered with new care products, which she, you know, brought from many journeys uh, on her little journeys out. Um, she would take hours, you know, to pin her hair back. And uh, in various ways. And also rumor had it that when a servant made her hair inappropriately, they pinned it back the wrong way, that the count, you know, the countess would fall into this rage and like massacre the girl. So, you know, and then she would take that maiden's, that maid's blood from the face, you know, and she would, she would put it on her own skin. She would think that this would make her smoother and firmer she believed that like she was like i said something going on so she truly believed that these things that she was doing would help her stay not only youthful but uh they would also help her stay you know firmer and um, you know i don't know if in her way she thought you know kind of gave her some eternal life i don't know i don't know stay young forever so then she got the idea, well, you know, why don't, why don't I just bathe in a tub filled with the blood of, of, um, you know, of these, of these maids. Why not? You know, I'm already putting it on my face. Like, let's just dive in. Let's do it. So she, um, she then decided to, you know, take basically beautiful women and, and that were either maids or, or some kind of, you know, they, they served her in some way. And uh, she bathed in, in the blood of, of the former beauty. So, you know, she called Dorka and, um, and told, you know, and, and Joe. And, and she told them um, to, un, you know, undress the girl, the girls and, uh, you know, hold the arms. And over a large vat... You know, she'd cut the victim's arteries and the the maid bled out. And, and the, you know, the countess took a bath in the blood, which from now on was was her her magic elixir in a way of, of life, of youth. She thought she'd stay youthful. You know, we're over here putting on makeup. Like, what are we doing? Right? Mm. But, <laughs> just kidding. But... It was, um, you know, that's how, how disturbed she was. That's how much this was out of hand. You know, it wasn't just now, you know, we got the bestie over here telling us to kill people and claim, you know, blame it on the plague and the husband's gone and, you know, we have prisoners and, and crazy people living with us. But now we're bathing in, you know, in beautiful women's blood because it might help us stay beautiful. I mean where does it end <laughs> where does it end for her well <laughs> time will tell so as she's going on with this 
Um, and now she has her, her, you know, miracle elixir, you know, I can't have, can't not have that. So she, um, one of the girls, um, so when one of the girls was to die, there was an, um, extraordinary silence in the castle and the, you know, uh, and in the stronghold, those who came to speak with with the lady of the house <laughs> that you know the evil uh beast or or whatever the heck you want to call her at this point were um they were they were hurried briefly and on the pretext of her her ill being so immediately after dark the victim was sent um to the cellar for wine where where the 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 funny, the funny little one, um, Fico would, you know, overpowered and, and would kill these women. So if you basically questioned or told the countess that she was going, you know, there's something wrong with you. Something's going on. Like, I'm just trying to help you because I care. Like, I'm, I'm really worried. I'm concerned. Well, then you're going to get a, you're going to get a visit from a, a funny little dwarf. And, uh, yeah, it's not going to end good for you. So... Pretty sure after that, people thought they just kept their mouth shut, just laying. So, um, Elizabeth then, after after the girls that would say something, would get sent to these cellars, and you know the her her little friend there would um, overpower them. You know Elizabeth would hurry to the cellar with her um, her maid servants, and you know who carried the the dead to you know to prepare them in this bathtub. Um, after the bath, uh, Elizabeth went. To the room and the maidens gathered um they would gather dry blood you know and which they later used to wrap the body of of elizabeth you know the door the you know the, so fico's task was to hide the corpse in one of the numerous underground passages because this castle had you know passages all over its castle so sometimes the countess um took the blood shower on such an occasion um young victims um was was you know it was it was close they were closed in a cage which was um too low to stand so and it was too narrow um to sit but uh full of um full of studs so the cage was um suspended onto the ceiling so, <laughs> yikes. So when the cage was uh, rocking back and forth, the girl closed um, in it was torn to pieces. You know, just torn to pieces. So, um, you know, onto those studs. So they call, they ended up calling it the um, Iron Virgin. So, and it was sometimes used, you know, in that way. And, um, it was, you know, sometimes they would take these knives and, like, stab them underneath the woman's breast. I mean, all these weird, sadistic, crazy ways. And another thing is, is that, so, uh, Frederick, before he, you know, before he died, he actually gifted, <laughs> not only were, you know, the, uh, the clawed gloves not enough, but he also gifted her with a torture chamber it said so that's where she would have her fun again they, they made this into like a couple's thing i don't know but um you know obviously evil never wins so it's you know it's interesting so um so she uh she would leave and basically the murders um started to arouse suspicion among the locals obviously I mean, she visited um, all kinds of places and these people were just popping up dead all over the place. Um, everywhere she was staying, you know, girls immediately began to disappear, you know, so um, they're mutilated, uh, covered with numerous wounds and, and crazy things, you know, the bodies were eventually found in different places. Um, it never really occurred to anyone, though, that this had to do with the, you know, with the, with the Countess. Um, or her or anybody that, that worked for her. You know, when the Countess noticed that the blood of, um, 
ordinary vill villagers gave a weak effect because she felt like she could feel the effects of this um in the appearance of her of her complexion which it probably was just honestly aging she was probably just aging but you know you can't have that i mean who <laughs> can age oh my lord that's not good at all i can't do that so she's probably really in all reality dealing with the effects of aging but she's thinking that these you know these ordinary um these you know they're too ordinary for her like these normal villagers that are not going to work so she started to kill um beautiful noble women you know from poorer families of course i mean can't get you know too high up on the train you don't need people coming at you so um she even opened now get this she even opened an academy so she opened an academy when um parents began to inquire about the the fate of the children their children you know elizabeth's ridiculous explanation <laughs> began to rise suspicion so even though she was smart common sense would probably tell anybody you know that you probably want to have a good excuse for these things she didn't have that so you know the most something so simple as, as the excuse she didn't have because she was so wrapped up in this life now it was it was a part of her so they they basically you know they no longer it was no longer possible to to basically say it was this this epidemic this pan, you know this epidemic that was going on this plague or whatnot so they couldn't use that excuse anymore so um it was an accident um on you know on the hunt basically um was being given as a reason for the the victim's death oh they're hunting and they you know slipped and fell into you know something I don't know. so they just you know the madness and, and and she just didn't care she really didn't care anymore to be that that discreet about it she was just saying stuff um you know when in cellars there was no room uh for the graves of the of the next victims the bodies of the dead were buried um in shallow pits they did in, in courtyards and thrown in a, you know the castle um moat where you know hungry dogs pulled them out like they were just like everywhere now and she wasn't even being that careful anymore she just didn't even care anymore it got to that level she was so into it that she's like ah everyone knows anyway everyone suspects it i don't even care so she you know stopped even giving a giving you know a damn about any of that she really didn't care anymore so she went on to uh you know just say ah wherever you can throw them throw them they didn't mean that much to me anyways they were just giving me youth so um you know so they were they were also transported by a special carriage while the remains were thrown around the areas from the from the windows of the carriage just tossing them out so like garbage when you know and when things went too far 12 of um complaints were sent to the royal court and the hungarian king um you know, Matthias, he, the second, he, you know, initiated an investigation. Like, what's going on here? Why are people complaining about this? Why are people saying, you know, Elizabeth lost her whole mind? You know, why, why are people around her dying? So they, you know, finally, they took the complaints and the, you know, into action. Obviously, Elizabeth stumbled onto some territory that she probably shouldn't have once here now. So, um, so that's where it, it, this investigation began. Well, you know, um, it, it's it's hard because you you would think that this would have happened a lot sooner, but it just didn't. Why? Because of her power. So in the spring of um, 1610, on the behalf of the king and um, the parliament, the you know the highest judge, um, they had um, it was a. Uh, um, our George, uh, ugh, I can't say that name. Thorzo was the last name anyway. He initiated this the secret investigation, so it wasn't even made public that they were doing this investigation. They're just like, hey, quiet. We're dealing with a real winner here. Let's keep it on the down low. Like, let's not even say anything, and um, you know, let's let's just get this going. Too many people are complaining, so they were witness. You know, witnesses were interrogated. Um. 
um, people were interviewed, uh, you know, and most of them were able to confirm, you know, the worst suspicions of the kings. And they spoke about tortured and murdered, you know, women and girls and, you know, um, reports of cannibalism. And um, still, though, no interviews were done, you know, with their own eyes. You know, the reports were, um, the reports by, by pastors of, of the castle that she lived in, um, they discovered, they even said that they discovered bodies in the tunnels and connecting the churches and with the castle, um, you know, where the church and the castle would connect, they were finding bodies. And, um, you know, it also helped in the case initially that Thorzo, um, intended to close the, the countess's, um, in the, in the monastery. So they were going to, they were going to close them in there and say, Hey, until we get answers, you know, that's where you're going. And then she, Elizabeth decided to then threaten, you know, the investigator. And, um, it, obviously it didn't go as well. So, <laughs> so what Elizabeth basically was threatening with was, uh, to get the pro-Turkish, um, you know, family led by, by Gabriel, um, against them. So there was already rebelling against, um, Harrisburg at the time, which is where the investigation was kind of going on. And so they were basically left with no choice. He knew, you know, however, that if he summoned the countess to the court and proved her guilty, you know, her enormous fortune, would have been, would be confiscated so um mostly by the king of hungary uh he would take in the fortune so he made an agreement with elizabeth uh elizabeth's heirs anyways um the countess was to be caught red-handed so that she could not deny any of the crime she couldn't deny what she was doing and she would spend the rest of her life locked in her castle now who does that sound like? Who does that sound like in history? Who was stuck up in their castle and, you know, basically could not leave? Dracula. So, that's where this gets a little interesting because they knew they couldn't do nothing with her. They knew that she was basically untouchable as far as, you know, she would then turn around and, you know, you get me, I'm gonna get you. And, and that's, you know, not something that they wanted either. She had a little bit more power than they did. So, December 29th in 1610, um, uh, Georgie, um, Thorzo, who was doing the investigation, um, and his, uh, his regime, you know, entered the, the unguarded mansion, you know, under the castle, in front of, um, Elizabeth's eyes, the, uh, the the people brought the bodies of victims to the courtyard one of the girls was still alive who did you know who who did this to you who hurt you you know the 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 um highest judge asked a woman um and her name was um Catherine and and she you know they're they're saying who did this we want you to tell us right now right here in front of everyone who did this to you so she went and she told them, you know, what happened to her and, you know, told them that, um, that poor, you know, Catalan, she, she was torn with, with tongs and, uh, you know, the lady, um, Elizabeth, you know, beat them with her hands. And when the countess heard it, she tried to blame her servants. You know, I let them do it, um, uh, because, uh, I was even afraid myself she tried to play the victim is what she tried to do so after a long search about 50 corpses you know pop up and um the countess was taken to the castle and her three servants as well as you know the um zirko the the the, the dwarf um they were interrogated and there they were you know basically tortured now themselves in their um testimonies they tried to blame one another there's i know she did it he did it she did it he did it yeah whatever so their mistress and the late um anna 
uh, FICO testified, FICO testified that widow, um, you know, the countess mistreated servants when the count uh, was still alive. But when she hired Anna, bestie Anna, she started to brutally murder her victims. So he's saying, you know, they're saying, hey, not only, not only was she at first torturing them, but now she grew into killing them. You know, and they were saying that the mistress killed between, you know, 36 and 50 people, you know, um, and that's how that kind of, you know, now they're playing the blame game. So <laughs> a register, because, you know, you got to keep notes, you got to keep notes and stuff. Um, actually <laughs> indicated that it was much higher than 50 people. So it ended up being about 650 people so their numbers were a little off just saying so it was reaching like i said over about 650 people so after hearing the 14 member you know court met and the final verdict um was actually given on january 7th of um 1611 and um charged elizabeth with uh criminal offenses and her accomplish or her accomplices um with uh vampirism that was a thing then sorcery um celebrating you know pagan uh rituals which wasn't a you know cool thing then the um countess was sentenced to life imprisonment in her castle so uh so Cato, uh, Catalan, uh due to the lack of evidence was also sentenced to life imprisonment and other servants um, to death. So even though she's saying like, hey, this happened, this is what was going on, she also got sentenced because she was considered an accomplice. She was a servant of hers. That's how it goes, an accessory. You are an accessory now. Um, so because of his young age, uh, the dwarf was actually beheaded. So um, Fico was, eh, they beheaded him. And um, they publicly, and he was publicly burned. Both Elizabeth's helpers, um, due to the burdens of the acts, that, you know, committed, were tortured, you know, before death. They just kind of figured, hey, you did this to them, we're doing it to you. That's how that's going. Like I said, uh, they're, you know, they played that game. Get me, I'ma get you. So, because these people went on, you know, for how long with this going on and, and they just basically had enough they were done so um without questioning uh two weeks later so on that brings us up to january 24th um elizabeth was finally accused and um was spared due to her aristocratic origins so basically because she was from a, a you know well family well-known family and she was only given small amounts of food and um, isolated into a room in that castle. So during that time, she um, she protested against you know the verdict. She was saying she didn't do nothing. Many times her little letters proved that she had uh, no remorse. She didn't care at all. She had no care in the world about what happened to these people. What she did to these people, she just was like, ah, I didn't do nothing, you know. But again, we're dealing with people that were already probably very very mentally ill they you know dealt with uh keeping everything in the family which then self would be you know yeesh. but she was um she ended up dying of hunger oddly enough um because she was walled in a, she was in a tower and um she uh she ended up um she had a terrible so she she was already being held in this tower and she was not wanting to eat um you know and on august 21st of 1614 uh, even today her death it, it's a mystery some say that she you know was even poisoned um some say that she died of, of the hunger which some people which was the biggest speculation you know um according to uh, the legends her body was in a terrible state you know her forearms had tooth marks in them well you know the earth around her body was just like covered with blood she was um buried in a crypt in the church you know at the at the castle 
uh, you know, until now, however, the, the body of the, the Countess was not found. Hmm. You know, there was obviously several conspiracy theories about her alleged, you know, escape even. Maybe that was one of the people she killed. She was able to, you know, kind of get away with it and slip them in. She dipped. I don't know. So, you know, that's what legends say. Um, but, you know, historians have always wanted to discover, you know, the truth. And, and researchers, you know, interested in the, the Countess's life and activities. So the most important um, monographs of Elizabeth uh, Batori, the, the legend of the blood princess, if you will, has been um, passed from mouth to mouth, you know, for centuries and became an element of a folk folklore. So at the turn of the 19th century and the 20th century, the story of the Hungarian aristocrat, you know, um, was basically, uh, she, that was terrorizing and, you know, basically messing up, you know, all of her people was, uh, well, it was not until the 80s of the 20th century, though, that the um, Hungarian historian um, Laszlo Nagy wrote two books, you know, in which um, the tried to objectively present the story um, of the lady, you know, Elizabeth. Undoubtedly, um, the book of the Hungarian researcher, Irma um, Kardas, she described many new, previously unknown facts about the, this countess, you know, in her life. And, um, you know, and it was very interesting in the publications too, the, you know, the the Slavic and, and Czech um, historians are rather, they're reluctant. They don't want to portray, you know, Elizabeth in a good light, you know, proving, because she's proven guilty, no matter what. To them, she was proven guilty. So basically you have these people saying, hey, look, it wasn't as bad as, you know, as, as kind of history has shown. It's not that really as bad as it looks. You know, maybe she was even a victim. Maybe some might speculate that. Um, you know, the most important, uh, the most important thing though that they knew is that they still didn't want to shed her in a good light because of the fact that she was deemed guilty. So either way, she was still guilty. So they didn't, um, you know, they weren't going to really try and still make her look good in any way. So there were people that obviously, I'm sure even till today, believe that there's two sides to every story, which there is. And unfortunately, we'll never know because Elizabeth is no longer, you know, here. But, you know, there is a publication. Um, one cannot forget about the book by, uh, by uh, Kimberly Craft. The infamous lady, the true story of Countess Elizabeth Bathory, um, is actually published in 2009. So if you ever have a chance to check that out, definitely check that out because I think it's going to give a whole different look on Elizabeth and what she was about. But um, again, to each their own, as far as do you think Elizabeth was maybe a victim from birth? She was birthed into a family that already had a lot of issues, a lot of things going on. Um, you know, maybe you see her as a, as this is the way her life would have went anyways. You know, there were a lot of mental health issues that no one took care of, you know. Or do you see it as, hey, she's a cold-blooded killer and she got exactly what was coming to her if that was her in the chamber. And that's just the way that it goes. I'd love to hear what you guys think. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say on the subject. I think it's very interesting. It's very interesting when you have things like this from the Victorian area that you may never know the answers to. You know, as science becomes more and more, obviously more and more facts seem to come out, but you know, you'll never know unless you were there. So if anybody knows a little bit more about this story or maybe your ancestors are from the era, definitely comment, you know, let me know what's up. Is anything, you know, are the 
tails that you see um, accurate or do you see them as not so accurate? Definitely let me know. This is the look I feel like. You know, I'm va a vampirist when I was back in that day. <laughs> More of the darkness to them. So, again, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you had fun with the story. It's definitely a true crime that goes down literally in history. Like I said, tell me your thoughts. Let me know what you think. I appreciate you guys tuning in. And until next time, we'll see you later. Have a good night, guys. Thank you.